Seth, let's go into an alternate galaxy right now. You want to join me? All right. Okay. Yep. Um, this is a little left field for me. Okay. Right? For me, it's left field. For me, it's left field. So not be scared. O- not other bass fishing shows. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter another dimension of Stray Cats Outdoor Cartoon Television with Seth Fighter in his office. Seth, today we're going to talk about techniques, okay? Let's talk about techniques. One, Whoa. yeah, I'm going left field. Whoa. See, you didn't know I was going to talk. When do I ever talk about techniques? Are we talking slip sinkers? No, we're going to talk about, uh, no. We're, this is serious. Okay. I'm being serious. All this right. is serious, Pat, right I'm now. into it. Let's serious talk about Pat. fishing. Yeah. You know, I know, he knows, they know, all you know, that one of the most effective ways to put fish in the boat is swimming a jig, right? It's deadly. It's deadly. It is. It's a great way to put that trolling motor on, go down the bank, make a bunch of casts. It's a subtle, non-invasive type bait, and fish seem to always hit it. You know, not always, but you know what I mean. Yeah. You can get a few bites on it. I want you to tell me Seth Frieder's approach to swim jig fishing. Where do you come from in the school of swim jig fishing? Well, I mean, swim jigging started not too far from my house. I know. With you. I know it did. Like lacrosse, Mississippi River is kind of where it all started. And uh, I've kind of, I started out with like the straight fluoro, um, lighter jig. Northern style. And fishing like boot tail or a curly tail grub and just slow, steady winding it. And um, I still do that quite a bit, depending on, usually more when it's colder. And then uh, I've also, I do a lot more like the newer style, the heavy, the, you know, the 3A sound swim jig, braid, straight braid or braid to a leader, um, cross style trailer, and, you know, popping it Alabama shake and whatever you want to sure, call it. Sure. But uh, uh, I, I do that a lot more now. But I, I guess I fish down south a lot more now, too. Yeah, so that have something to do with it. Exactly. And I, and I, um, I think that, so the deal is, you, why has it transitioned to that? So why, there, there is a definitive northern style and a definitive southern style of swim jig fishing. Yeah. So why do fish in the south like the southern style and fish in the north? You said you're fishing in the south more. Like, so what? You have to do that? <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, I didn't really catch it. I went a while without catching them on a swim jig, to be honest with you, a couple of years. I don't know if they kind of quit eating it or if I just because I wasn't fishing southern style or whatever. But the swim jig used to be like one of my best confidence baits. And I had a little lull with it for a couple of years where I just did not catch fish on a swim jig. And now the last couple of years, it's been it's come, been coming on strong for me. So and the, and you it's think good. I don't think they ever quit biting it. I just maybe it was the way I was fishing it down there, or maybe I lost a little confidence in it. I don't know. So I, that's the turning point. I could say that went a couple of years without catching many fish on a swim jig too. And JP yeah. and I talked about it for the last like two years. We didn't get nearly as many bites on a swim jig. Yeah, and we're fishing so, the same waters all the time. Maybe, maybe it was just the bass. Yeah, yeah. They they had a meeting. They had a big yeah. meeting. A new They're league. back. It's a new league. They don't fit. They don't need swim jigs in that league, apparently. Yeah, I'm not mad at them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I. I mean, I saw the same thing. So that aggressive style of swim jig fishing, um, it does provoke more strikes. And what you're just what's what's your setup for that? You set on the braid, and what are you throwing? Seven foot, medium heavy. Yeah, seven foot, medium heavy, thirty pound braid, uh, seven three to one, and. Uh, 15 to 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. How do you attach that? Uh, with an FG knot. What does FG mean? Effing good. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. That Thanks. is correct. Um, let's check with the judges. Is that correct back there? Yes. Yeah. Effing good. Very good. Hey, can, can you catch them on that thing with no grass down south? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that why uh, the, the whole fish a lot around thing? those floating boat docks? Uh, those things kind of always intimidated me when I started fishing down south because all, all the docks we got up north, you know, they're like two, three, four feet, just post docks, pontoons, stuff like that. Or you're really fishing like bottom contact baits. And then mm-hmm. you go down south and there's like, I mean, after 
six feet below the dock, there's nothing there except a few cables running down. A lot of those things are out in 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 feet of water. Wow. Like, mm-hmm. Swimming a jig right under those floats is a really good way to catch them as long as you got a little bit of color in the water. And then uh, my favorite place to swim a jig is flooded brush. Nice. For sure. Hey, you want to know what, what, uh, what else is also effing good? What's y- that? You sitting in your kitchen wearing your bib still. <laughs> uh, these aren't reindeer bibs. These are just uh, overalls. So. Oh, just overalls. All right. <laughs> just regular old round the house Thanks, bibs. Thanks, JP. Seth is hard for <laughs> and I'm in my office. I have an office now, by the way. He's a big time. Yeah. Oh, I love look. it. Look at that. Trophies, you got trophies and deer antlers. Trophies and everything. Yeah. What's, what's that cabinet behind you? Go, this guy? Yeah, go in that cabinet and just pull out a random object. I don't even know what's in here. Yeah, just pull something. It's actually completely empty. Look at it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> pull, grab a random object out of somewhere. I got a giant deer antler. Look at that. That's that's what sits around that's Seth Fighter's office. I'll tell you what. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I got a couple nice ones. This is a magic of a bass fishing talk show. You know that. Yes. This is the intimacy. I'll, I'll give you $1,000 if you can guess the score of that antler to the eighth. Let me see it. Uh, show Andy again. He's the expert. Please, can you hold that up? He's always, Seth Fighter's always laying money down this on is this for show. for $1,000. He's always laying money on this show. You and Zona. What do you think, Andy? Come on. Give yourself One, jeopardy. One sixty-three and a quarter. One sixty-three. Way off. Way off. One sixty-three and a quarter. Correct answer is one hundred one and seven eighths. Whoa, wow. damn. Sixty forty over under yeah. overhead lifter, whatever it takes. What, you know what, what does that even what? mean? <laughs> it's a sixty forty one sixty fourth, dude. It's metric. Duh. You don't even know. Is, JP don't even know metric. Is that like a four? <laughs> kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> I know that back straps are delicious. That's what I will tell you right there. Back straps are delicious. Hey, um, dude, uh, thanks for educating me on the swim jig because I really wanted your the straight skinny oh, yeah. from you on that. That might have been a little selfish, but I, I I apologize. But no, that thing saved my butt a lot down south. Yeah, I, many tournaments where I've had like terrible practices and just absolutely terrified to go fishing that day and put on a white swim jig and. Ended up making a top twenty, top thirty, something, you know, pretty solid off a of, off of nothing. And do you think nice. there was a cycle amongst ang- anglers and not really against the bass, like the bass didn't send an office memo out, but it kind of went spinnerbait cycle, swim jig cycle, chatter chicken cycle, and and then there's a revolution again. Do you do you yeah. see that shift? That, that might be. Might be. I, I see it. I don't know. But I, I see it. I don't know. This yeah, could be. But again, I, I'm asking you if you see it because you're seeing it on a different level than I'm seeing it. Well, I definitely saw him quite quit biting a swim jig for a couple of years, but I mean, spinner bait stayed good, chatter bait stayed good. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> a bass is a bass. I'm plain and simple. They were just be uh, on strike against swim jigs for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that chatter bait's time is about to run out too. Everybody's it checking that thing. I don't it know. hasn't yet. It hasn't. Nope. It catches a lot of damn fish, man. That's it does. for sure. With that in mind, you know how we usually play. You've played that game Bass and Life with us on this show before. Yeah. And but I, I'm not going to play the game. I just want to ask you a question. But I would like to hear your opinion and you related to bass fishing and life. Do Do you think that it is better to be good at a lot of things than to be an expert at one in life and bass fishing? What do, you, what do you think about that? I don't know. Um, I think you're going to get paid more often being good at everything, but you're going to get paid a lot more when you do get paid if you're really good at one thing. Yeah, there's a lot of examples mm-hmm. of that, isn't there? Yeah. I, I yeah. Mean, it, it, I mean, it, what's better, to win one tournament or cash 10 checks? You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's probably better to win one tournament, but. Because they always talk about being versatile. Like, you have to be versatile to be a successful angler. Yeah, but I think even the guys that you, you know, you think uh, like a hackney guy is like one of the best flippers in the world. But I think he's, you know, he's still better than 90% of the people on planet Earth with a crankbait. You know what I mean? Right. You just don't see that. He's still versatile, but, um, you know, if you can catch him flipping, that's what he's going to do. 
And, and he's probably better than 75% of the planet at drop shotting, even though he doesn't drop shot. Probably. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, I mean, that, that's the nature of the beast. If he were to drop <laughs> shot. <laughs> that we-